Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today is the start of my deep dive into sci-fi. So, I am planning to read lots of sci-fi this year. It's 2021 is my year of sci-fi, it's what I've told myself. I'm going to be experiencing the genre and getting to see what I like and what I don't like in that genre and just sort of understanding my tastes a little bit better because at the moment I'm not too sure what I like and what I don't like. I've picked out three books to read for this vlog a variety of subgenres of sci-fi and seeing what I like about them. So I have picked out Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell, Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle and Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So I'm going to be reading all three of these over the next few weeks. What I plan to do is, as of right now, I'm going to rate them and see which ones I think I'm going to like the most, what my order is going to be between which ones I'm, I'm, which one I'm going to like the most to the least. Then I'll read the first chapter of each of them and I'll rate it again and see how I'm feeling after the first chapter and see which ones I, see which one I think I'm going to like the most to the least. And then at the end of the vlog I will do that again and put them in an order of which one is my favourite out of the three. Uh, I thought that would just be a fun way of like comparing them. As of right now I know that Winter's Orbit is like an arranged marriage between planets. The person that the, one of the characters was meant to marry has been killed, murdered, and so he's suddenly thrown into a marriage with someone else and they're having to figure out who killed the original marriage partner and, and what's going on there and stop rising hostilities between their planets. Sleeping Giants is about a young girl who finds a metal hand that is older than humanity and then it jumps forward to when she's an adult and they found out that there's actually like lots of parts of this giant that uh, are being discovered all over the earth and what, who they are and what they mean and everything to do with that. And then Children of Time is I guess a space opera where humans are travelling to another planet because they believe that's where it's livable and they find that it is already got, not people, but like beings living on it that are giant spiders. A bit nervous about this because I hate spiders. So thinking about all of them now, about which one I'm going to like the most, I feel as though I might I might put Winter's Orbit at the top because I quite like romance. And then Winter I think it might be Winter's Orbit, without without having read anything from them, maybe Winter's Orbit, Sleeping Giants, and then Children of Time, just because I'm nervous about spiders and I feel as though Children of Time is like the most space opera-y, like the, the, the scariest of the sci-fi. So this is the order that I have them in right now with Winter's Orbit at the top, then Sleeping Giants, then Children of Time. So I will report back if anything has changed after reading the first chapter. Okay, so having read the first chapter of each of these books, I, I actually enjoyed the first chapter of all of them. So uh, I don't, yeah, so far so good that I'm enjoying what I've been reading of chapter one. For all of them it was 20 pages, so pretty even across them all. I think actually my order is going to be Winter's Orbit, Children of Time, Sleeping Giants, so I swapped Children of Time, Sleeping Giants round. I just really liked the writing style in Children of Time. Uh, not that there was anything wrong with Sleeping Giants at all, but I just, yeah, I really liked the writing style in Children of Time, so I just, and I liked, I was very intrigued from the very beginning. I mean, I was intrigued with them all, actually, so I'm feeling very positive about this whole pile. So hopefully that continues on through the rest of the books, but I will check in once I keep reading. I'm going to keep reading The Win Winter's Orbit because I was just enjoying, like, the political side of it, the romance and the politics. It still just seems quite fantasy-esque rather than sci-fi-esque, so... I will stick with this one. As a quick update, I have been reading Winter's Orbit and I am 270 pages into it and I've been really enjoying it so far. Uh, it's not like, I, th I think it's going to be four stars, like as of right now. This, you're following two main characters, uh, Jainan and Kiem, and they are from separate planets and there's a treaty between the planets and the treaty needs to be secured via a marriage. Jainan was originally married to um, one of Kiem's cousins but he has died in rather suspicious circumstances and so to fulfil the treaty he has been married off to Kiem. I have been really enjoying the character dynamics in this and their relationship. So their relationship is just so cute. <laughs> like it really is, 
it doesn't really read that much like a sci-fi it really is more just focused on the characters so like there isn't really yeah it doesn't really seem very sci-fi-ish for a someone that doesn't really know that much about sci-fi like there isn't that much like space talk you it could easily be a fantasy in because yeah it very is very limited on the space i wouldn't say like the world the world building is its strong point the strong point really is the character interactions and dynamics between our two main characters that the romance really does take center stage and that's what i'm focusing on like i am really enjoying the romance and not so much the world building and the the world like you don't really know that much about the world you know that there's these treaties that go that are in between these planets you know that something is there's been someone behind the scenes potentially manipulating things things aren't quite as they seem you know going in that prince tam has been murdered or he's died in suspicious circumstances so you know that the relationships are on like the brink of catastrophe like things could easily tip one way or the other so it, that doesn't feel like it's strong suit the strong suit is really the characters and this weirdly reminds me of the goblin emperor uh, which i didn't really like but i feel as though they have similar vibes i'm liking this so but i feel as though if you like the goblin emperor you might like this because goblin emperor as well by katherine addison is a fantasy book which really focuses on character dynamics and it feels as though in both there is like the world out there there is like a sci-fi or fantasy world and politics and everything going on with that but the real focus is on the characters so that's why i'd say that they're similar and as well they're similar because like in the goblin emperor the main character maya he becomes the emperor because his the rest of his family die in suspicious circumstances and that's the same with here like the people have been killed off dying in suspicious circumstances so i feel as if they have lots of similarities between them yeah that's the vibe that i'm getting from it but i'm much preferring this to the goblin emperor so yeah it, i'd definitely say it's very digestible if you have never read a sci-fi book it's very easy to get into and read and enjoy so i finished winter's orbit yesterday and i really enjoyed it i think i'm gonna give it four stars like i just really liked the character dynamics and the way the characters interacted and the like this it was set in a it's a queer norm society which i really liked the way that that was uh, represented i believe that the author author everina maxwell is queer as well so it's own representation for that and yeah i just really liked how it was just normalized that people could be with whatever gen gender it didn't really matter at all it wasn't even like a topic that was ever brought up it was just the norm so i really really liked that aspect of it and just it was more people were both with people for their personality and not what gender they were just the character dynamics like they were just so cute and i just i really liked that i'd say that the world building is quite weak and like the actual plot is weak it, not weak but like it's really brought up by the characters and not so much the world building and the plot so i feel as though you just get given this world and it could it could be sci-fi it could be fantasy it could be anywhere it d didn't really matter it was the characters that really made the story i'd be interested to see more of the world i feel like we just get like this tiny little piece of it uh and it's not really explained like how the world came to be or like w what the rest of the space world is like outside of this small section of space that we're into because it does say that like, there is much more to the galaxy universe whatever this is in uh to to what we are seeing like we're just seeing a small tiny part of the world so i think it'd be really interesting to see books from other perspectives within this world and, and see that and see how they're affected not necessarily from these characters i feel as though this is, is a standalone and it does wrap up quite well like i did i'm very satisfied with the way this finished but it would be really interesting to see other 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 stories within this uh world so yeah, I would I would strongly recommend this if if you were like me and hesitant about sci-fi. I didn't find any of the lingo difficult to get into really. It was quite straightforward. It, it's very much I guess like a contemporary in space with like great character dynamics. So would would definitely recommend Winter's Orbit. Uh, obviously at the moment I've only read one of the three books, so this is currently at the top. But we will see what happens once I read the other two. So uh, yeah, four stars. As a quick update 
I have somehow read 160 pages of Sleeping Giants <laughs> and I don't really know how that happened. So I downloaded the audiobook because I, I've heard really good things about the audiobook for this and uh, I thought, you know, why don't try the genre out in a different format as well as reading them physically. So let's see what the audiobook is like. So I downloaded that. I've been listening to it today. Uh, obviously I had already read the first chapter so I didn't have to reread that so I just dived into the audiobook and it's very quick and easy and I guess because like the writing is it's really large font it's interview format so there's not that many words per page that it passes really quickly and that it, yeah it very quickly gets to page 160 which is where I'm at so I can't see this taking me like that long to finish. I don't know how I'm feeling about it. Obviously at the beginning you the beginning is this girl falling into this metal hand uh, and that was all in the first chapter and then it like skips to her as an adult and her as a scientist and then you you've got different interviews with people that are like on the team that are finding the different parts of the sculpture alien thing and so like as they try and like fit it together and like what it all means and like where it's come from. I'm intrigued as to who the uh, what's this called? The interviewer is. Like, I, I'm intrigued as to who that actually is because we don't know who he is, we don't know his name, and I feel like there's more to him than just being the interviewer because he, he seems to be in many different pies. What's, the, what's that phrase? He seems to, yeah, be like, he seems to know things, and I'm like, how, who is he? Like, how does he have that much power? So, yeah, I'm intrigued by him, but I don't know if I'm, like, loving the plot or anything. I'm not, like, gripped by it. I mean, it's very easy to listen to, but I'm, like, compelled to keep listening and reading it now that I've finished cleaning. It's a bit of a weird one. A bit of a weird one. I'll see how it goes, how the second half of it goes, seeing as I'm coming up to halfway through. Uh, I can't see it taking very long. I, I didn't really expect to suddenly be reading this because, yeah, I, was, I wasn't expecting to read this now, but okay, guess that's happened. I'll update as I finish it maybe and see how I feel then at the moment I'm just feeling fine about it like I feel as though everyone really loves this like they really really like it and at the moment I'm just like it's fine like it's not bad but it's not like wowing me so I'm thinking there must be like there must be a twist something must happen because at the moment it's just fine I finished the audiobook for Sleeping Giants and I don't know how that happened one minute I was a hundred and whatever pages in and then suddenly it was over so it was a very quick audiobook I think I hadn't realized that because I listened to it on two times speed it was a four hour audiobook which is for the length of this which is like 300 350 pages I would have expected it to be longer but because of the format the interview style it was very very quick don't know how I feel about this like everyone told me the audiobook was really good and I mean I guess it was quite good but I don't feel like I had any connection to the characters like I I didn't yeah I didn't really connect to any of them and I don't know if that was like because of the way it's written and that you don't you don't actually spend any time in the person's head that you're just hearing their what they're saying so you're not actually spending time with them and so you don't have that like I don't know I didn't have the any emotional connection to any of them and it did feel very very quick like you didn't have it didn't seem like there was that much build up things just seemed to happen you didn't have any build up towards any of the action the action just started happening potentially because of the way that it's written and so I don't know whether it's the interview style that I struggled with because I didn't have the connection or if, but then that did make it a really quick and compelling read and I mean it does end in like quite an interesting place but the things I'm not sure if I really care about continuing either and I feel as though that's an unpopular opinion like so many of my friends love this book and I'm like well what did I miss? I sort of feel as though I could like just read a summary of books two and three and be satisfied. And the thing is, I've heard that the third one is disappointing and that it's the first and second one that are really good. And if I'm feeling that this one was like two, three stars, then am I really going to be enjoying the rest of the series? I don't know. Like, there were some, there were some interesting twists. I'm intrigued by like the world or like, because I know it's our world, but I'm intrigued by what this all means. But I don't know if I'm intrigued enough to continue. Let me know how your what your thoughts are on the second and third book. Like, should I continue? Like, continue with the audiobooks? But then it feels like a waste of an audible credit. I don't. I don't know if I am or not. I. I'm very on the fence. On the fence.
this this is my uh, next sci-fi book done for this vlog and that means that I have now finished two books with just Children of Time to go and so currently this one is it's below Winter's Orbit so Winter's Orbit at the top then this book uh, and so we've just got Children of Time to fit in and see where that falls hopefully it'll be better than this I'm, I'm hoping so checking in on my sci-fi books now i have started children of time finally i mean i was meant to read this in march and it's now april but you know mood reader here you can't force me to read a book when i meant to but uh yeah i have finally started children of time sorry gregory i'm late but i'm coming i'm, I'm here I'm, I'm getting there i'm meant to be uh this is meant to be the buddy read on Gregory Le Perch's Discord for March and we are doing a live show together and I am late to the party, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. So I have now started, well, I've, I read the first chapter a few weeks ago now, uh, but I have now continued in Children of Time. I started it last night and I got to page 50 uh, and so far I'm actually really enjoying this. I quite like the writing style. I, I, I find it like descriptive but engaging like I found it very engaging and compelling to read that I was pretty happy just reading it until I needed to go to bed I'm liking it so far I am actually really liking it I mean you can definitely tell that they're spiders and it's very weird being in the head of a spider which I'm still trying to get my head around because I'm like I don't like spiders and this is definitely a spider <laughs> uh what I am interested in is that it says they have book lungs and i'm like what is a book lung like what part of the spider is that and i do not want to google because i hate spiders and i do not want to have like spiders in my google search like so what's a book lung what is it because i'm imagining that they have these parts of their bodies where they can like put books into them and like carry around little books with them because i mean <laughs> wouldn't that be cool that you have little pockets where you could just like store your books but I don't think it is that. Um, I think it's going to be something else, and it's not. It's not a pocket of your body where you can like hold books. I'm, you know, like a kangaroo pouch, but for books. That's what I'm imagining. But it's not that. I know it's not going to be that. So, uh, so far, so good. Uh, yeah, I, I will definitely check in in a bit. I'm hoping to just read this all weekend, and hopefully finish it. But like, that's a bit ambitious because this is a. 600 five 600 600 page book so i don't know if that's going to be possible but you know it is a bank holiday weekend so yeah i i could do it so i sort of forgot to check in i have been reading children of time sorry so yeah i've been reading children of time and i'm 250 pages into it now not quite halfway but coming coming up to halfway through and yeah i'm enjoying it i am pretty i am really enjoying it so you're following you have two perspectives you have like the human perspective and you have the spider perspective you can tell they're spiders but they're not too creeped out currently like, there was a scene with some ants just now which was a bit like creepy but it's okay like I i'm just stopping my imagination from seeing them as spiders i'm like you're not really a spider you're not a spider it just that's just having that mantra on repeat even though I know that they are spiders. So yeah, so far so good. It's really interesting like, thinking about how you have this like uprising, well not uprising, you have this rising up and developing spider community and society that is in this like form of evolution and development, forming a new society and like they're developing. Whereas humans are at the, you wouldn't really call it the end of their lifespan, but like they've been dying out. And so this is dying out spacecraft that's been traveling for millennia across space with humans in like limbo as they try and find a new home and so it's a bit of a weird thing to think about like who you're rooting for like are you rooting for the humans because you're like oh you want them to find a new home and you want them to to be able to build their new society outside of being on this dead spacecraft that's pretty much just traveling across the space for millennia or are you rooting for the spiders and the society that they've been building and like their development and their evolution it's just a weird thing to think about because logically you think you're on the side of the humans but then also you're like but the spiders the spiders could be forming their own society so it's a bit of a it may, it plays with your emotion, emotions a little bit and the thing is you know that the spiders have been 
uh, genetically modified by humans of the past. So it just makes you think a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. I think I'm currently preferring the human perspectives, however much I'm rooting, well, I don't know if I'm rooting for the spiders, but I prefer the human perspective. I find it's been a bit more engaging in the spider's perspective. It's a bit more action packed, there's a bit more going on there, which is just grabbing my interest a little bit more. So I am preferring those chapters, but like I'm okay with the spider ones. I just prefer being in the human heads. Uh, so yeah, so far so good. Yeah, I'm, and I am enjoying it. And it's not too sciencey. Like I can understand everything. Ooh. Like it's all very like understandable, digestible. Like there's nothing too like scarily sci-fi about it. So that's positive. Currently, so far, so good. Like I'm, I'm liking it. It's not like I don't think it's going to be five star, but I think it could be a four star. And definitely liking it more than Sleeping Giants. Okay, so I have now finished Children of Time, which was the final book for this vlog. So my overall thoughts on this are, I think it's a four star book, I really liked the writing style, so I like, yeah, I liked the way Adrian Tchaikovsky like wrote the book, but I just had a few plot issues with it. So I guess because of the nature of space travel it takes a long time, and that people are in their like pods or whatever, sleeping through the many hundreds of years, it felt as though it would skip time, and that you would go from like being an action scene like one minute and then suddenly the only next had that chapter from the human's perspective you'd be hundreds of years in the future uh because they've been sleeping and i'd be like but we were having some action like what happened to the, what happened there like they've just gone back to sleep okay fine so i had those sorts of issues because it sort of felt a little bit inconsistent because you, it kept jumping forward which i guess was the nature that it had to be done like it would be unrealistic for them to not go back to sleep but it just it sort of seemed to break up the narrative a bit additionally i it's hard to like see the spiders as anything but spiders but it, it was really interesting it made me think the spiders could be us for example like what happened in this book you've got the spiders that are on this planet planet and the humans have like ge bio genetically engineered them to grow and they've given them this this thing that like helps them grow over time and so they will gradually become more and more sentient and more and more aware of what's going on around them. So part of me makes me think that that's what's happened here. Like, we started off at, like, at the beginning of, of time, and like gradually, as humans, we have developed, and we've become more and more advanced, and we've entered space, and like just grown and become more and more developed. So what happens if we could have easily have been the spider that people before us, an alien, put us here on this earth, and wanted to see us as an experiment like they did in this. Which then makes me think like, oh, are we seen as spiders to another alien race? Are we like this? We, I mean, me personally, I hate spiders. Like they scare me. Like I, I just, the legs, ugh. So maybe like people and aliens see us in the exact same way as we see spiders. I don't know. It just made me think if that came across at all clearly or not. But that was my thoughts that we could easily be as humans, as repulsive as, spiders are to us to some a other alien force but yeah very interesting it made me think it was definitely a thinking yeah it was a book that made you think and i did find it really really interesting and seeing how spiders developed and how you didn't i didn't really know who to root for because like i didn't really like any of the characters really like i didn't really like any of the humans but i was like i'm rooting for the humans because i'm human but then i was like i'm also rooting for the spiders but i hate spiders so it definitely it was a really thought-provoking book. I know that there are like continuations to this but it does really read like a standalone so I think I might just leave this as a standalone and leave this as it is in by itself. So looking at all of the books that I read for this vlog, Sleeping Giants, Winter's Orbit and Children of Time, thinking about which ones I liked the most, I would say, well Sleeping Giants is definitely at the bottom because I wasn't so much of a fan of that one. But then thinking about Winter's Orbit and Children of Time, I'd say Children of Time is definitely more out of my comfort box than Winter's Orbit. Winter's Orbit is much more what I'm used to reading. And this one is just like, they're completely away from my norm. So but I feel as though that might sway Winter's Orbit to be my favorite out of the three. I feel as though, I mean, I gave both Winter's Orbit and Children of Time four stars and they're both very, very different. Like there's they're very different, they're very different stories. 
so it's quite hard to compare them even though they're both classed as sci-fi. I think that would be my order of them. Winter's Orbit, Children of Time, Sleeping Giants. So if you have any recommendations for me based on those thoughts then let me know. Speaking of my, I will be doing this again probably because I am as I said trying to get into more sci-fi. So the other sci-fi books that I have are The Three Body Problem, uh, Murderbot, All Systems Red, uh, The First Sister, The Punch Escrow, The Oracle Year and A Memory Called Empire. So let me know out of these six books which ones you want me to read for the next vlog because I'm not going to read all six but like let me know which one you would prefer to see in another vlog and let me know if you enjoyed this let me know what other sci-fi books you think are going to be my taste based on what you've seen here thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my future videos bye